Okay, we're looking at question seven and it asks, the information above provides the most support for which one of the following? Okay, so this is a most strongly supported question, okay? And, and many of the time, uh, much of the time, it is analogous to a must be true question, meaning that the answer choice absolutely, positively has to be true given um, the statements or the argument in the stimulus. However, it sometimes on uh, most strongly supported, it's just what's most likely to be true, okay? And in situations like that, the other ones cannot be true. The other choices um, cannot be true or it's an extremely large stretch to make these things true. And there will be one answer choice that, that you have a difficult time making false in your head, okay? So that'll be the most strongly supported. So let's kind of take a look at what we've got and going on in this argument. Um, bottom line, uh, we're talking about water pipes here and we're saying the inertia affects water flowing through closed pipes. And because water has mass, it takes time for it to slow down and it takes time for it to speed up, okay? And then it, then it goes down to inductance. Um, I like sports, I like the NFL, I'm thinking of inducted in the Hall of Fame. No idea why, but that's what's going through my head. But it says the effect of inductance in electric circuits is similar to that of inertia. So inductance is similar to inertia. Inertia affects water. Um, so inductance obviously has, has some similar effect on electric currents as does inertia to water. Okay, so let's go through the answer choices. We'll start at E and we'll work our way up. Um, E, when a water pump is switched off, it continues to pump for a couple of times. Um, we have no idea what a water pump does when it's turned off, okay? Um, water weighs something, so it takes uh, you know, well, water a bit to slow down or speed up inside of a pipe, but we don't know what the pump is doing, okay? Let's look at D. Electrical engineers try to minimize the effects we don't know what electric engineers do. Um, you know, I have no clue. Um, so that should fall out pretty easily. We're not, it's just not even close. So E and D so far should be easily gotten rid of and we're looking at A, B, and C. Let's look at C, inertia in the flow of water pumped by an electri electrically powered pump is caused by inductance in the pump's circuits. Okay, so what it's saying, when I first read that I was like, huh, what, what is that saying? Basically, it's trying to say that the inertia in the water is caused by the inductance in the circuits. Um, no, not at all. They're saying inertia affects water, inductance affects circuits. Um, it's just making an analogy between the two. It's not drawing a causal relationship between the inductance and the electrical current and the inertia in the pipes. So C, while extremely complicated and makes me want to shoot myself in the head for having to figure it out is not close at all. C should fall out as well. Let's look at B. The flow of electrical current in a circuit requires inertia. It is a requirement. Necessary condition. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm like, B is maybe the case. Let's look at A. The rate at which electrical current flows is affected. Still don't know the difference between affect and effect. Somebody please email me and tell me. Um, by inductance. Okay, so I'm between A and B. And I know that inertia affects water flowing through closed pipes. And inductance is similar to that of inertia. Therefore, I'm going to conclude that inertia affects electrical circuits flowing through whatever, and A is the correct answer to the question. Now, how did I, you know, I, I made that leap, right? I, I, I connected those, but I think another way that you can get at this is if you look at B, that notion of requirement, and then you just glance right up here and you say, well, does it say it's required? Um, no, it just says it affects. It's nothing about a requirement. So B should fall out and I'm left with A as the correct answer to the question.